sadly, my fermentation chamber I did a stupid thing. And I was using a hammer and chisel to help get some of the huge ice blocks that were formed around this. Um, very stupid. Have no problem admitting it. And I guess I got closer than I thought and made a little chink. That's why I lost all my Freon or whatever gas is in this. We're going to attempt to repair this. All right. There's the gash. And uh, I've got a friend that works in HVAC. This is somewhat of an experiment. We're going to see if we can fix this. He suggested getting Master Cool Alum Bond. It's actually uh, made with aluminum in it. And since that's aluminum, that's what we're going to do. I've already cleaned and prepped the area. And uh, we've squeezed one portion out. One of them is uh, uh, like the uh, aluminum, if you will. And one's like a resin. And the other's a hardener. So we've got to mix these up. So as you can see, I totally overdid it. That was fully my intention, hoping to get a little bit actually inside the crack and then seal all around the outside. So I've got tons there. Um, you can read the specs yourself, but it can hold pretty high pressure. And hopefully with having that much on there, it, it'll do the job. So we'll find out. The next step's gonna be really interesting because uh, a buddy of mine is gonna come over and install a, a valve so that uh, it can be filled, so we can be pressurize it again, and we'll do a, a leak test once, and then he'll go ahead and put the inert, inert gases that they use, a Freon or whatever it is. Beautiful. Beautiful. Pretty darn close to perfect. The pipe comes down out of the wall, gets down under the house. You see the pipe coming to it, and there's a, about a foot of no copper between the two. <laughs> and just below the opening are two cans of beer. And that's where we're going to crimp it then. Yeah, and we'll throw some stuff on the end to make sure that it's sealed. And then we can bend that back in when we're done. Pressure temp session, elevation. We're doing, this is cool because I can choose 134A, continue, hook to this guy, done. 
Alright, so we got three PSI. Huh. Or point, whatever. It's going to fluctuate yeah. between the two because there's not really anything in there. Isn't that how it always is? <laughs> right. <laughs> I can hear it. Yep. So it did have some pressure in these. Okay. Good news is, I don't think mine are leaking. Because you'd hear it right now, right? In the back? I think so, yeah. Okay, let me release the pressure. And it's recording. Okay. So you just put your hand in and fill the way. Be creative. Have fun with it. Okay. He asked me to film you. Okay. Well, I pressure tested it. Okay. And now I am going to put it on a vacuum. Okay. So we're actually going to go out of here. Uh, home. Vacuum. So it's a thousand, 10,000 microns, or 100,000 microns, because there's no vacuum, it's completely open. Okay. I wonder how many microns are in inches of mercury. In inches of mercury is literally inches of mercury. Let's see how it's pulling down? Yeah. We want to pull this down to 500 microns. Okay. And at 500 microns, it's going to boil off all the, any moisture in it. Okay, so that sounds a lot like 44 inches of mercury because microns count down and inches of mercury count up. That so you'll notice as the microns get lower, the temperature gets higher. So it's now at a thousand and ninety um, microns going in a weird pattern going down um, and it's 458 and before I originally got out here he also did a better bubble to bubble test it. We have pulled the thing down to vacuum. Yeah. Um, we're going to add some refrigerant so I attach the line and then I'm still vacuuming so that this line is completely clear. And I've got um, the arm 134A on there. The other thing I did in order to pull the vacuum was I removed the Schrader valve. So I'm going to go ahead and add the Schrader valve back now. So I've closed my valve so I can take this off. And I'm going to put the Schrader valve back in. What's a Schrader valve? It's what keeps the refrigerant inside. It's kind of like what's on your tire, on a bicycle tire. Hmm. Okay, so the Schrader now is in there. And you just closed it again? I closed the valve so I can take this off. Ah. Because it's in a vacuum, it should just pull it right in. I don't know if you're able to hear the sound, but it sounds like water is traveling through something that is pressurized. Or depressurized, as in this case. The compressor just kicked on. We've now reached a low pressure of in the 60s. 60 PSI's. We pulled off the sensor and we're adding refrigerant back in. Okay. We've just turned off the uh, compressor. compressor. 
as you can see there's only one cord plugged in so what we ended up using we did research and there was very little information on this particular type of, of refrigerator and compressor um, nor was there any information on how many pounds of pressure we need to put in it which made it challenging so what we determined doing the end uh, to keep costs down you can get these big tanks that cost about 130 bucks but you can go to some auto part places we went to Napa Auto Parts and here's what we picked up um, and this is the R-134A it's something that you would use in uh, your for your car's AC um, and it works in this particular case as well which was great and then he left me a nice little piece here that I can use to uh, add Freon should that ever arise but um, basically these compressors aren't built with a port for adding any Freon whatsoever it's best to come over here in this tail piece and we were able to uh, cut into this and uh, put a whole new unit on with a T so that uh, we can release it or add more anytime and then we pinched the end and then we uh, uh, took copper and then uh, uh, we just kind of welded all the ends on this to seal it up we have done a pressure test we also put in um, a colored dye that you see with fluorescent lights so I let it run for a day and a half about 36 hours and came back with a fluorescent light and the only place where we saw our markings was uh, where we spilt a little where we were filling in over here so we're confident that the system is running well so now it's time to push her back in place. I am so excited and thank you to my buddy, Jeremy, for helping with this project. Okay, here we are. We've had this running for about a week now. And they've got a bunch of beers I still need to organize down in the bottom. And I've got some of it down here, but I don't certainly don't have all of it. And I've got a lot of it in the other fridge still. Uh, I haven't moved over uh, because uh, well, I'll explain that on another video why it's taking me so long. But let's talk about this briefly. So one thing you want to make sure is that the lines are completely bled. If you ever get a puncture in one, uh, we had just enough pressure to pop my little seal. It formed a bubble and popped, and we had to reseal it. Not a big deal, but it still took time because I had a gentleman out here working on this. So it added some time. The other thing that we did in wrong was that we... Uh, we're given advice where to start pressure wise and we did that and it was too high we start too high of a pressure when you start too high what happens is the compressor will overheat and it will kick off and we kept bleeding it and going down and in the end we just decided to start over so what we did and you saw some of that uh, in the video uh, where where my buddy Jeremy and his son where my his son was taking video basically he bled the lines again uh, uh, we were, they would already been pressure tests, so we were good. And then he used a, a vac system, an evac system, and he brought it down to, I can't remember what the pressure is, but a very low pressure. Uh, they call it like triple evac or something like that. And they take it down to something like 200 microns or beyond that they're filtering at. And to the point where uh, uh, it's sucking out so much that it ends up boiling uh, any liquids or anything that are in the line, it boils them off, any of those impurities, um, and gets rid of them. And um, so he let it run like that for quite a while. And he came back, uh, uh, actually this was another day where we came back and did it after his son. So uh, we vacked it one more time. And then instead what we did was we just brought up the pressure very slowly. And that was the real secret. So if you ever do this, I would say that's the way to go. Uh, we brought it up to about a pressure of, of 50 pounds and um, that seemed to do it in the end um, because when we had a higher pressure it never really cooled off inside we could physically go into the touch and it didn't feel cold this is already icing up just like summer because it's been warm um, so we got up to about we got it to 50 pounds that thing was chilling like nobody's business and uh, we closed it up and waited another hour and we'd seen that it already dropped down uh, into the 50s uh, in that time frame and it had been warm outside uh, it's been in the 80s here in Oregon again so that was the the deal and um, it's been running like a champ now for like I say about a week 
I'll put the rest of it in there soon, but it's revived and everything is good. We will catch you all later. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Cheers, everyone.